So now as we continue our look at the synapse, what we've stopped at in the previous video was the fact that we have this binding occur between the neurotransmitter that was released into the synaptic cleft and eventually bind to and with the specific receptor on the postsynaptic membrane. Now what's going to occur is the following. You're going to have a postsynaptic potential. And that's what we'll look at in this next flowchart, which we'll entitle postsynaptic potentials. These are basically the effects of that cause, okay? The effects of the neurotransmitter binding. Now, broadly speaking, we can basically state the following, and this is basically what we're going to uh, highlight uh, upon as we go through this. We're going to state that a graded potential is going to occur. And this is something we saw in the prior lecture. A graded potential is going to occur in the postsynaptic cell. Now, that's just a very sort of a simple way of stating something very specific. But how can we sort of figure out what this means, the graded potential? And so we can ask ourselves exactly that question. How? How can you have this graded potential result as a sort of effect of the neurotransmitter binding? This occurs via ligand-gated ion channel. So this is a new type of ion channel that we have not seen previously that is specific to postsynaptic membranes and thus postsynaptic potentials. They're called ligand-gated ion channels. These are what are going to cause the graded potential that we'll see. And so let's take a look at how they function. What we noticed is that we ended the prior video on the fact that we had action occur, some sort of event occurred at on, on the membrane um, that's of the postsynaptic cell. Okay, so we knew that the presynaptic cell will make those neurotransmitters, put them into a vesicle. Those vesicles will fuse upon depolarization. They will go across and diffuse across the cleft and then reach the membrane of the postsynaptic cell, just like we stated right here. Next cause would be we're going to have the binding occur. The receptor protein that's found on the postsynaptic cell on the membrane, I should say, of the postsynaptic cell, that receptor protein binds, but we're also going to say another thing here. It binds and responds. That's the key here. It binds and responds to what? What is binding to it? What, was been, what has been released? That neurotransmitter, that chemical message has been released. The neurotransmitter, therefore, because it binds to this membrane protein, this receptor protein, it's going to be considered the ligand. The ligand is the, the molecule, the structure, whatever it may be, that binds to something else, causing an effect. The ligand-gated ion channels are those that accept a ligand, like a neurotransmitter, and their gates will have some sort of effect. Something will happen to their gates. What is going to happen to the ligand-gated ion channels on the postsynaptic cell? That's going to be the opening of them. They will open. Okay, The binding of neurotransmitter opens ligand-gated channels. And it makes sense. Once you have the correct key fit the correct lock, you're going to have the possibility of opening this door. This channel will open. When this channel opens, you will get what you expect here. Imagine that this is an environment like a regular old neuron. A neuron is an environment in which the outside may have positive ions or negative ions, whatever they may be. And so when those ligand-gated channels open, whatever ions are on the outside that are maintaining whatever potential or causing whatever membrane potential there is, those ions are by definition going to diffuse across the postsynaptic membrane because now they have a channel to go through because that channel has been opened because the neurotransmitter has been fit and binded to that channel opening causing all of this to occur. Now once that has happened we then get because ions are moving you're going to get some sort of change in potential some sort of change in overall positive or negative of this membrane. So we call this now finally once you have this ion diffusion a postsynaptic potential. Now there are two possibilities here. Remember, we're trying to create a graded potential, okay? A graded potential can either be inhibitory or excitatory. And that's exactly what we see here. At the postsynaptic potential, depending on what ions diffuse in or out in this situation, you may get an EPSP or an IPSP two very important states that you need to understand. Simply speaking, an EPSP or an excitatory 
postsynaptic potential, very simple acronym here, means that the resulting ions that diffused across the postsynaptic membrane as a result of the ligand channels opening, as a result of the neurotransmitters binding, those are going to cause a membrane depolarization. The membrane depolarizes, and this makes sense, okay? It definitely should make sense because this is excitatory. Excitatory means you're going to try to get action potentials to occur. You're going to try to get some sort of action, and in order to do that, you have to go away from the resting potential. You have to depolarize from that negative 70 to negative 55 and then do that plus 35 millivolt shoot. All of that stuff that we talked about in action potentials has to happen because this is, by definition, excitatory. Thus, by definition, a depolarization event caused by the ions that diffuse. Now, the ions that diffuse may also cause an IPSP. That's the absolute opposite here. The IPSP is an inhibitory postsynaptic potential. And thus, you would not state that the membrane depolarizes, but as a result of the ion diffusion, the membrane hyperpolarizes, just like we learned from the last lecture. Hyperpolarizes. It gets more negative. And because it gets more negative, do you expect an action potential? Absolutely not. So this is definitely an inhibitory state. And these are all as a result of the neurotransmitter. Now, the neurotransmitter is going to basically dictate whether or not you have excitatory or inhibitory. That's something we'll talk about that detail a little bit later. But for right now, these are our end-all, be-all consequences from all the way at making a neurotransmitter in the presynaptic cell, then diffusing it across the synaptic cleft, now arriving at the postsynaptic membrane, and causing some sort of effect. And the effect may be an EPSP or an IPSP. And that's our basic idea, all governed by a ligand-gated ion channel on that postsynaptic membrane. Now, what we're going to look at next is the idea of the summation of postsynaptic potential. So we'll entitle this over here as summation of postsynaptic potential. So what we want to focus on here is the following. What we notice is that you're going to have a postsynaptic neuron. Okay? It's going to be something that receives a neurotransmitter, binds a neurotransmitter, has some sort of effect. And sometimes this postsynaptic neuron, as we saw right here, may be excitatory. Okay? It may receive an EP. SP, or may become an EPSP, excitatory postsynaptic potential, or sometimes it may become inhibitory, it may become an IPSP. The key idea to understand about this, and this term summation, is going to be the following. What's going to happen is that the dendrites and also the cell body, these are usually going to be the regions involved in dictating EPSP versus IPSP, they're going to receive information from many chemical synapses, okay, from many, this is the idea of summation here, many chemical synapses. So much so that you're going to have a summation of either, let's say, excitatory or inhibitory depending on the type of information received. So there's going to be maybe 10 chemical synapses summing up to an excitatory potential, but then there may be also, let's say, 11 inhibitory synapses that are summing up to an inhibitory potential. And when you combine those two conflicting and contrasting uh, situations, you eventually end up with a summation of an inhibitory potential because it was like 11 of these and 10 of these. Basically, what we're stating here is that the dendrites and cell body receive a ton of information from many different synapses. And the sum, the overall uh, number that they basically figure out from this information if it's excitatory or inhibitory depends on how much they receive and from who, specifically the chemical synapses that we've just mentioned. We're going to elaborate on this idea of summation in the next video and conclude our ideas on regarding postsynaptic potentials as well.